Hi, uh, my name is Ratul Mahajan. I work in the networking research group at Microsoft Research. Uh, what we are showing here is a demo on bringing smart homes to the masses. And this is a pretty fruitful collaboration with my colleagues in the networking research group, Sharad Agarwal, Victor Balst, Stefan Sorio, and my colleagues in the Vibe group, uh, AJ Brush and Bongshin Lee, and an intern we had over the summer, Colin Dixon, from the University of Washington. So this demo is around bringing smart home to the masses. The underlying observation in our work is that a lot of us now have basically a dozen or so network devices in the home. And there's devices range from smartphones to TVs to cameras to game consoles and whatnot. So what that means is that we have all the basic ingredients for building smarter homes here already, but smart homes are still outside the reach of the masses. The two problems happen that the, the way these devices work today and the way they are controlled, it requires a lot of effort on part of like really tech enthusiasts to get them going together, to manage their homes, get parental controls right, get access control right, so a lot of work is needed. So if you don't have the time but you have the money, you can actually get a custom installer to do it. So you need either time or money is what basically is keeping smart home away from the masses. So what we are trying to do here is to develop a software stack that goes right from the devices to, to the user's needs such that it makes it becomes very easy for users uh, to control their devices and actually live in a smart home world. It becomes really easy for people, software developers, to write applications for the devices without worrying about what the nitty gritties of how devices are connected and what functionality they offer. It becomes easy for device vendors to become part of the ecosystem. So the software stack we're building is cognizant of all this. Uh, what we're showing in the demo here is basically we have set up like a mock home and we've set up like a front, front door area where your mock door is uh, standing out. We have some cameras, we have some light, light switches, we have some sensors here which are a door and window sensors. So this, uh, this area happens to be our kind of like a dining room area with a TV and some lights. And you see like a light switch here, which is commodity. And this is our living room area with another lamp and other light switches here. Uh, what you notice about these devices, they are effectively commodity devices. We haven't modified in any day. And what we are showing is like how easy using a software it becomes to actually control and manage these devices. So one of, one of the first applications I'm going to show you on, on my phone, essentially, what you are getting is here a live view of what's going on in the home. So we have three cameras. Each camera is actually different. One of them, two of them are IP cameras, different vendors, and one of them is actually a web camera, doesn't connect over the network. So what you're getting here is a live view of what's going on. So you can select what kind of view you want. So this is like a view from the back porch camera. There's nothing interesting going on here. You can zoom in if you like to get a sense of when you're not at home. You can see monitor your home, monitor your kids, just monitor what's going on. So this is like, the thing is that, not that you can do it, but the thing is it's so easy to do that the application is completely unaware of the kinds of cameras being used. So pushing this envelope a little bit further, suppose you're not at home at work and your doorbell fires here, somebody rings your doorbell. Either your doorbell fires or let's say somebody opens a door or a window in your house. So we have an application running here. What that application does, it monitors the fact that your doorbell just fired or your sensors just got activated. What it'll do, it'll take images uh, from all the cameras it has and it sends you alert. It can send you an alert over SMS or as in this case email. And what you see here is like two new emails and these are corresponding to the two events that are just fired. And what you get in this email essentially is a view from all the cameras. So you can actually test what just from your home whether somebody you know came home or whether it was a robber or a thief who came home. So this is like a live view from all the cameras and as soon as they download I'll show you one of the views. So take the living room view. So you see the living room's empty or who's not. So you basically get a sense of why these sensors actually fired at all. So a third application that I'm going to show you is the, how we've kind of linked together. The scenario here is you have multiple TV screens in the house and you're walking around and you're walking around the house and you can actually control your lights in the house. So this scenario is around lights and TVs. So you're walking and you can control these things. Uh, as you walk around, suppose you turn off the light. And what will happen is that, you know, the video itself would turn off. The light turned off, the video turned off. And now what you can do, suppose you move back into the room, what will happen? So this is our dining room area. So what would happen if I turn on the lights here, just using the remote? Uh, the lights, not only the lights would come on, but the video would start playing from the same point where you left off. So, um, so these are simple applications that we built. And what I'm going to show you is like how easy it is to build these applications and what the user experience is going to look like. So I'm going to take you here. Hi, right, so what I showed you just now was uh, a range of applications running on commodity devices that we hadn't changed and how easy it was to uh, use those applications once they are in your home and once these devices are in the home. 
Uh, what I'm going to show you now is the experience of writing those applications and the experience of bringing those applications into your home or bringing those devices into your home. So I'm going to start off with the developer view and I'm going to focus on the door notification application that I showed you earlier and this application in our setup was using five different devices and what you'll see here is that this writing this application in C sharp was essentially less than 500 lines of code so I'm going to scroll real quickly to just give you a sense of the code but you're not going to be able to follow what's happening but at the end at the end of it you'll you'll notice that it's less than 500 lines of code and the reason it's so the code is so compact is that the code the application developer is not worrying about the devices the details of the devices around how they connect they have to work only with the functionality that the device offers so for in our particular case this application you can throw more cameras in you can throw more sensors in and the application complexity will not increase so that's the developer experience let me now talk a little bit about the user experience so this is the default home os console what you see here is all the applications that have been installed and all the applications that are currently running to run an installed application all you do all you have to do is to just click it and the application starts running in this particular case so in this case this was the camera application i was showing and it's showing you a live view from the cameras in there so i'm going to minimize these windows and to show you like how what it takes to bring a new application into your home and how much we've simplified the process and taken the guesswork out so you do manage your home network, you do add new application. For each application that is part of the home OS um, ecosystem, what we show you is that, you can, by the way, you can search through these applications and focus only on the ones you're interested in. For each application that is listed, we show you whether it's compatible with your home or not, or whether it needs additional devices. For applications that need additional devices, we show you what capability is missing in your home and how you can get those capabilities. So for instance, if you were really interested in this motion sensitive lights application, we tell you that this particular home is missing a motion detector, but you can get that capability by buying this PIR motion detector or this ultrasonic motion detector. And once you plug it in, I'll show you how to plug the devices in and things in there. But for the applications that are compatible with the home, what you can do is you can install it from right there. Uh, so I'm gonna try and install the home browser application and while as part of the installation process you can also access control your application so like whether whether or not kids can use the application uh, what devices this application can use and and whether you want to place restrictions around time like parental controls all these kind of get built into during the installation process uh, itself and i'm going to change the name of the application to something friendly And what you see is the application com comes to your home console and you can just run it from right here. So this is a simple application that we wrote that gives you a sense of all the devices in the home. That's what it's doing. So that's, that's essentially the application installation. The work that went behind it was understanding what kinds of primitives and concepts people find useful. So for instance, like you know, restriction by device and application is a concept that we introduced in HomeOS because people want, the, want to be able to control what applications can access what devices, and people want to be do, able to do parental controls and guest access rather easily. So those kinds of things are built directly into her system. So it'll give you a sense of like how you bring in additional devices into your home. You add new device. What the system does, it detects all the devices that it detects in your home network but that have not been configured yet. So let me try and configure the IP camera here. So press OK here. And then you get to sense whether this is a high security device or not. So accidentally do not give access to it. You give it a name. You tell it what applications in your home can use that device. So you can say camera app can use it but door notification app cannot use it. You press OK and close. Now this device is ready to go. That's it. Uh, once you plugged it in. So that gives sense of like how do you bring in new applications into home and how do you bring in new devices. Um, suppose you wanted at a later point in time, you wanted to get a complete sense of like security settings or access control in the home because talking about the home environment, security and privacy are really important to people. So we make it easy for them to keep their home secure and get a sense of like what this settings is. What this particular view is showing in a tabular form is all the activities that are permitted in the home. Activities not listed on this particular view are not permitted. So this top line here is showing that everyone in the home can use this application, My Climate, and this application can talk to this device, Indoor Thermostat, at all times of the day. So this way, basically, by parsing all of these, you can get a sense of all activities that are permitted. But not only that, you can get a sense of things like what can happen at night. So you see, fewer activities can happen at night because you restricted them by the time of the day. But not only that, you can, have, you can query like what can kids do at night. So you see like, you know, if you, want, if you had parental controls in there that kids were not permitted, and you can clearly see that like, you know, kids can only use the light switch in the home. 
and nothing else if that's the setting you wanted. So we basically give you confidence in the kind of security settings uh, you have in the home and that's part of the process on making smart home uh, available to the masses. Thank you.